In the last lecture, we looked at creating a area calculation. In this lecture, we're going to look at something different. That is, using the information attached to objects to create our report. This is a really fundamental way of using worksheets, and it works with so many objects. The great thing about it is that because it looks for information attached to objects, as you add more objects to your file, all you need to do is recalculate your worksheet and it'll find the new objects. Tools on the menu bar, Reports, and Create Report. So let's name our report. We'll call it our Window Schedule. We're going to look for objects with a record, and we're going to look for a window record. Now we could look for any of these other objects, I just want window. I'm just going to make this dialog box longer so you can see. You can see here I've got a whole lot of information that I can report. The first thing I want to find is the ID prefix. Now I want the ID label. So that's going to give me a W, and then it's going to give me my window number. I have to scroll down towards the bottom to find the width. I don't want to use overall width. I want to use a special one. Now it's normally down by the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on possible columns. It's now sorted that column alphabetically. So now all I need to do is find width. I also need to find height. Since it's alphabetical, it shouldn't be that hard to find. There it is, their height. So I've got now the prefix, which will be a W, the label, 0102, etc. I've got the width, I've got the height. If there's anything else you want to add, you can add that as well. For example, you might want to know what the sash operation is. I've also included the lintel size in the user1 field. Click OK, and that will create my worksheet. ID prefix, we're going to get rid of that and we're going to make the column very skinny. This is number. Window number. Or what about just, it's a window schedule, why don't you change that to number? Width. So let's just make that skinny as well. The width can be a bit skinnier, the height can be a bit skinnier. The sash operation, maybe not too much skinnier and the user field which is now going to say lintel. This row here with the diamond is known as the database header row and it's the row that looks for the information and tells you how many of there and also we use it to edit the criteria. Right click, edit criteria and we can then go back and have a look. So here this is listing objects whose record window is present but it is going to pick up things on design layer viewports. Turn that off. You might want to add more choices, so click on more choices. Now you can say, I want to only look for windows on a specific layer. There's only one layer in this file, but you might choose to look for the windows that are in the floor, ground floor, or the first floor, or the second floor. So this would give you the ability to filter your criteria. Click OK. You might notice that these windows aren't in order. When you click on the database header, these icons become available. Drag that onto column B and now it's using the number to put them in order. That's fixed glass at the moment. Let's change that to a top hung casement or awning hung window if you like. I've got one column too many and a couple of extra rows. Just notice my cursor changes shape when I go to that bottom corner. Click and drag and then let go. And so now I have a very simplified, very tight window schedule. I'm just going to make that window smaller because I'd like to show you something else. I've got a strange window size here. If I right click just here where it says 2.2, I can select the item and it'll zoom me into that window. That's the width of my window. Let's make that 24 inches or 600 millimeters. And then click on the green tick. Notice it updated here, but it also updated in my plan. 
This is called a two-way worksheet and it allows you to change the information on the worksheet and have that affect the drawing. It becomes very powerful. I'd like these two to be in my units. So right click, format cells, number, and we'll make those a dimension. So if my dimensions were millimeters, they show up as millimeters. If they were feet and inches, they would show up as feet and inches. So I can make that skinnier, and I can also make that one skinnier as well. So if you want to see it listed as feet and inches, make sure you format those cells. Click on that row there so it selects all the cells. Right click, format cells, and how about a border? We'll put a border at the bottom. We'll also give it a pattern, give it a solid fill with a light gray color. So now you can see I've got this gray header to the whole thing. When you're finished, go to view in the menu bar and turn off the database headers so you lose that top row. But if you ever need it to come back, if you ever need to change the way that the criteria are working, make sure you go to view in the menu bar, turn the database headers back on, and when you're finished, turn them back off again. So this is also in my resource manager. Click, hold your mouse button down, drag it into your drawing, let go, and that's now on your drawing. Change the thickness of the lines. I can put that one over there, put that one there. And you can see it's got the header that I wanted with the color going across. These worksheets become very powerful. If you have a look at this particular building takeoff, it's giving us a huge amount of information about the foundation walls, about the timber framing, about the exterior walls, how many columns, the volume of them, and so on. So it becomes really, really useful. Well, that was the last exercise, and you might be wondering what to do next. Well, if you're using Vectorworks Landmark, then I suggest you take my landscape course. If you're using Vectorworks Architect, then I strongly suggest you take my architect course. Either way, you'll find that you get a whole lot of information specifically designed for your industry. I also suggest that you become a subscriber to this website, archoncad.com. Every month we get a new manual. Every month we have online meetings. And there are over 2,500 movies on this website that will help guide you to use Vectorworks more effectively. We also have a series of interactive webinars. You can come along to these and find out more about Architect or Landmark or getting started. The great thing about these online sessions is the ability to interact with other Vectorworks users and find the best ways to work most effectively. I'd like to thank you again for buying my course. I know that you've got a lot out of it and that you're now going to become productive because now you can use Vectorworks effectively.